Concerns over national security have spurred a House committee to scrutinize the University of California, Berkeley's research partnership with Chinese entities, fearing it may give China an unfair advantage. Emphasis is on the Tsinghua Berkeley Shenzhen Institute, its potential military applications and questionable disclosure of Chinese funding. Former President Donald J. Trump and his allies are planning an extensive expansion of presidential power, aiming to centralize authority in the Oval Office, if he is re-elected in 2025. The proposed changes include curbing the independence of federal agencies and instigating a criminal investigation into political rival President Biden. President Donald Trump fulfilled his campaign pledge of appointing judges who defend religious liberty according to a new study. These Trump appointees to the lower federal courts often voted in favor of religious liberty claims but showed a bias against Muslim claimants. The study also found these judges had stronger religious affiliations and were more likely to be members of the NRA. Senate Democrats are pushing for legislation that imposes new ethics rules on the Supreme Court, amid controversy over the justices' outside activities and travels. Despite Republican opposition, the Judiciary Committee will consider the proposed rules by Senator Sheldon Whitehouse that demand greater transparency and stricter conduct among justices. China's economy has recently become unstable, making it more open to engaging in diplomatic talks and showing more flexibility on economic policies. This shift is most evident in its relations with the United States. Despite complications, the two countries have begun discussing various issues, signifying a potential flaw in their relations. Smoke pollution from wildfires raging in the western part of Canada is set to return to the United States this week, according to forecasts by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. As nearly 900 wildfires burn across Canada, parts of the U.S. are bracing for the impact of smoky air. U.S. President Biden invites Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to the White House, addressing previous tensions between the two leaders. This first-time invitation after Netanyahu's re-entry to office in December comes ahead of Israeli President Isaac Herzog's controversial Washington visit. Despite criticisms of Netanyahu's policies and his planned judiciary reshaping, the meeting is seen as a move to improve relations. A relentless heat wave continues to grip a third of the United States with temperatures soaring into the triple digits. Phoenix has seen two weeks of temperatures over 110 degrees Fahrenheit under a persistent heat dome. However, Midwest and Great Lakes are experiencing cooler than usual temperatures. Accompanied by severe storms with heavy rain, the unstable conditions are causing havoc, including flash floods and air quality alerts due to Canadian wildfire smoke. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell, who remarked on the strength of the U.S. job market before the pandemic, is now faced with its recovery. Powell intends to balance controlling inflation and preserving the revitalized job market, a feat many see as improbable. This raises questions about the market's future and Powell's ability to perform a soft economic landing. Russia is withdrawing from a UN-brokered agreement that allows Ukraine to export grain via the Black Sea, demanding sanctions on its own agricultural exports to be eased. This move disrupts a deal vital in stabilizing world food prices and addressing shortages in Africa and the Middle East. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has urged the Senate to expedite the confirmation of more than three dozen State Department nominees, citing delay tactics by Republican senators as a national security risk. Blinken voiced concerns over the increasing tendency to block nominees across various government departments including defense and justice. Senator Joe Manchin and former Governor John Huntsman present the No Labels Policy Manifesto promoting political compromise. Despite denying their forming a third-party presidential ticket, they discussed conflicting views on climate change, gun control, and underlying party support. The duo insists such a ticket would not be needed if 2024 nominees adopt their moderate principles. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope has celebrated its first year of operations, revealing insights into distant galaxies and black holes. Additionally, development advances in robotic technology, such as the Valkyrie robot, are contributing to space exploration and offshore operational safety. NASA's fleet of eco-friendly vehicles for Artemis crews and flight studies into air quality highlight their commitment to the environment. Racial tensions and violence continue to rise in France, with experts attributing the unrest to systemic issues in the country's centralized police system. The killing of a teenager in a traffic stop and the decades-old brutal arrest of a black soccer player, Theo Luhaka, illuminate long-standing issues of heavy-handed policing and discriminatory practices against minority groups, especially in poorer areas. As a pandemic-induced pause ends, California is beginning the process of verifying eligibility for its Medicaid program, MediCal. The change could result in up to 2.8 million Californians losing their coverage, despite some still being eligible. Those removed from the program are encouraged to apply for new insurance. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell to get your daily dose of news.